Let's look at this example. This is a more advanced table in Excel, and in, this is basically a student grade book, and it has all the fake student names and their fake grades for each of the assignment. And in this table, we need to be able to calculate the final grade of the student based on this grading scheme. Uh, this table also does a little bit of statistics for us. It calculates the average grade and the standard deviation. And also, this table assigns automatically the letter grade to the student based on their final total grade according to this grade determination table. In this example, we're not going to type in all the data manually because that could take a while. But instead, I have created a text file that contains all the data separated by tabs. Therefore, we're going to import this text file into the Excel file. So let me move this out of the way. And this is the previous Excel example that I worked on. So instead of creating a new Excel file, I'm going to simply add a new sheet and change the name to problem two. And as I said, I'm going to import data. Therefore, here in this ribbon right here, I'm going to click on the data tab and then import from text on my desktop, locate this text file. I do want it to be delimited because I want the text, the data to be organized nicely into my Excel file as nicely as possible. Click on next. And then the delimiters is going to be uh, t the tabs that I mentioned earlier. And finish. So I want to put the data in this current worksheet starting from this cell right here. That is my cell A1. The dollar sign stands for the absolute address. We'll talk more about that later. And hit OK. So this is not perfect, but um, all I need to do is to um, do a little bit of a cleanup. So let me do that for now. Now the data are cleaned up a little bit. Let me work on the formatting. Um, I want to eventually print this out. Therefore, let me see what it looks like. So I go to print. Mm, because it's going to take two pages, so I don't like that. So let me flip the orientation of the sheet. So let me go to page layout. Currently, the orientation is portrait. Let me change that to landscape. So you, you, as you can see, there is a dashed line that tells me that this is now the boundary of my print area. And I can change the margins to, say, narrow margin, just to, to make sure I can print everything out on one page. Now I can change the width of my cells again. And I also want these columns to be of the same width. So I right click column width, make it six. Don't forget I have a total here and um, letter grade here. And also I have average value here and standard deviation. So before I do the calculation, let me format this table. And because I have already covered formatting in the previous example, I'm going to do it fast. And uh, we're going to fast forward the next section.
Now, my table looks nice. All I need to do is to fill in the calculation. I want to calculate the total grade for this student. And we realize that, for example, underneath the quiz category, there are three quiz values, and each of them is worth one third of this total 15 percent. We're assuming there is an even distribution of grades just to make things a little bit easier. Therefore, each of the grades counts for 5 percent, which is 15 percent divided by 3. Uh, so this equals to this grade number multiplied by this one right here divided by 3. Let's just keep it short like this for now. Several things. First, if you're not sure if this 15% can be used to do the calculation, yes, it can. It is a value of 0 0.15. If you're not sure, move over here and look at under the number section. You will see that currently the format is a percentage. And you can change it to general, no specific format. It, it reviews its true value, which is 0 0.15. You can change it to dollar sign, other formatting as well. But percentage is good. But now it has too many decimal places. And over here, you can decrease the decimal to make it 15 even again. That's the first thing. Second thing, we do want to take advantage of this little handle to do quick copy and paste. But if we do it right now, oops, this is not right. Okay. The reason is because in this formula, C2, again, is a relative position. And when we copy this over, copy and paste this over, you see this right here was supposed to be C2, but it's not C2 anymore. It is actually C4 because we have pasted over the relative position. To fix that, over here, we want to put dollar sign in order to lock the position, to make it absolute. Now, a dollar sign in front of C means that the column C would not be changed. The dollar sign in front of the 2 means that oops, the row number 2 will not be changed. It's locked. So you can put both dollar signs in front of the column and row. But in our cases, we actually only need, um, well, actually, this is pretty good. Let's keep it like, uh, that way. And now, when you copy and paste this over, you will see that everything else is pasting the relative position. For example, it's no longer C4, but it's now C9. But this right here is not changed because it's locked by the dollar sign. There's a shortcut to do that. For example, if we want to calculate the next one, multiply by. Again, when you pick this right here, if you click on F4, it will toggle between relative, absolute, half absolute, half absolute, relative again. So that's F4 on your keyboard. Divided by 3 again. So let me complete this formula, and then we can show the rest of the table. So that calculation is done, and you can copy and paste by dragging this handle. As you can see, it messed up my formatting a little bit. So in order to avoid that, you can always copy and then paste formula. As you can see, the format is not disturbed by that copy and paste. So I don't really need two decimal places. So let me just highlight everything and then decrease decimal places. One is fine. And I can center it. I can do a little bit of statistics. I can calculate the average of all of these values. So this equals to average these right here. And you can always use this shortcut. And I'm going to copy and paste formulas so I don't mess up my formatting again. 
um, again, I only want one decimal place. Oops, one more. Okay, this is good. And I can calculate the standard deviation. Based on these data, standard deviation, STDEV. Now, if I'm calculating the standard deviation based on all of my population, all of my data, I need to use dot P. This actually explains this. It says that it calculates the standard deviation based on the entire population. If, however, I'm calculating the standard deviation only using a sample out of the total population, for example, if I have 500 students, but I'm only calculating the standard deviation based on this many 16 students, then I'm going to pick the S, S-T-D-E-V-S, and that's the estimated standard deviation based on a sample. Now I'm going to do the P because I have all the students here. I only need, oh, actually, let me do this first. Copy and paste my formula. And I only need two decimal places. Good. Now my table is almost done. All that's left is the letter grade determination. And uh, when you are not looking, I have created this little table here to do the grade determination. This table currently doesn't have any function. These are simply numbers and letters. This explains to me that if the student's grade is above zero, it is an F grade, unless the student's grade is above 60, then it's a letter D, unless its grade is above 70, it works that way. So how are we going to use this little table to determine the letter grade here? We're going to use a very useful function called VLOOKUP. V stands for Vertical Lookup. So when we type in this function name and the first half of the parentheses, you can see that it gives you hints again of the different arguments. So the first one is what is the value you want to look up? So this is the value we want to look up. We want to look up 90.7 in our little table here. The next argument is what table you want to look up this 90.7 grade. And that's going to be this region here. So we're going to look up 90.7 in this region. And when Excel finds a matching number, it will assign the corresponding grade and the corresponding grade, the next argument column, index number, it's going to be column number two in this region because not column number one contains the grades, but column number two contains the letters. So that will be two. And you can add more options. You can add true or false. By default, it's true. That's an approximate match. But if you change it to false, it means that Excel will only match A to 90 if the value is exactly 90. I don't want that. I want it to be above 90. Therefore, I am going to leave it as default. Therefore, this function can be used to look up approximate values as well. So that's done. As you can see, the student, he has a, a final grade of 90.7. According to this table, he gets a letter grade A. So let me just copy and paste my formula again. Oops, what did I do wrong? Well, obviously, I need absolute values here to lock my range. OK, and let's try it again. OK, that's better. Let me paste it over here as well. Okay, so the average grade in the class is B. Now I want to match the format. I can use a format painter and paint this over. So now the format matches the rest of the table. This I can do manually. Okay. All right. Now the table is almost done. But when I print it out, I don't want to print this region. 
because if we go to print preview, you will see that I need a separate page to print out my little table. And I don't need that information. Therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight these two columns. And then I'm going to data and I'm going to group them. So over here, you see this little minus sign here. When you click on that, you can actually hide these two columns. So between Q and T, well, R and S are gone. And of course, you can always unhide them. So this is nice when you want to print out your table. You see there's only one page now. There's no additional table to print out. So you can print it out or you can save it as an Excel file or you can save it as a nice PDF file. Let's check it out. So it's a nice one page. It doesn't have that hidden table, and it has all the information we want to include in this table. And that completes this ex example.